And good evening, good evening, everyone. Once again, this is another Loudoun County Photo Club peer critique event. Uh, once again, I'm John Tabor. I'm the president of Loudoun Photo Club. And tonight we have a 22 images that have been submitted for peer critique. Without further ado, um, go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Right one. And I wanna pick on Fred. Can you confirm that you see my screen? I see your lips moving, but I don't hear you. Well, there I you can go. see your screen. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, I didn't submit this time. That's fine. fine. I'll just pretend I did. <laughs> you can certainly offer your opinion nonetheless. So appreciate that. All right. Um, so just a brief recap for those who haven't seen this. It's a it's a non-competition friendly event where everyone can you, know, you can submit up to two images, get feedback on those images from your peers, other members in the club. So it's a great way to get feedback. And the goal is to help everybody improve their photography and advance our skills. So without further ado, roll into our first image. Say, so, John. So I, yeah. I will own this one. This is this is mine. So let me let me tell you what I was attempting to do, and I'd I like to hear from the members. So this is a photo actually I took years ago. I was going through my collection. I I, I don't usually do people photography because people are messy, kind of like you were describing earlier. <laughs> um, this was originally in color and a little bit wider. I cropped it and, and um, turned it into black and white. I, I just like the look of the, the girls in the car, the looks on their faces. Um, so yeah, I, I welcome whatever comments and thoughts people have. Okay. Thank you for that. Anybody want to kick it off? Or being shy tonight. Do they go um, upside down as well? What was that question? Did they also ride upside down? No, this was kind of like an airplane ride. So that it, it swung out 90 degrees ultimately from where they are right there. Um, I was curious whether you just happened to take this at the right moment or whether it was a series of pictures. Uh, and and this was the one that you selected because the, the way you captured the expressions is wonderful. Yeah, this was um yeah, purely serendipity. I was hanging around the rides. I was, and I took a bunch of photos. And this was frankly the only one of a couple that came out. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, it was originally in color and a little wider shot. But in playing with it, and I cropped it, turned it into black and white, and I liked the way it looked in black and white. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the black and white is right. Yeah, it actually does really look good in black and white. Yeah, I love the black and white. I've been in a black and white mood lately. <laughs> I I just I wonder about the left side of it if the shiny parts might be a little bit distracting. I'm just wondering if you could do a tighter crop or just tone down those. I don't know. But I love the expression on those kids' faces. I mean, that's just priceless. And I'm I'm just wondering how you could emphasize, you know, focusing in on them. So Patty, if you were to crop it, where were you from the left? You said from the left? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. The crop I'm where? Trying to feel that way too, yeah. Maybe cropping it in tighter from the left. Uh, crop to where though? More, yeah, more, more, a yeah, little uh, bit more, a no. little bit more. Yeah, uh, that right there. That's good. You could also crop a little from the right, I suppose. Can I? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Good. This is Greg DeQuare. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm nobody okay. make any Perfect. real comments, but I like that crop right there. Get rid of that direction on the right, and also kind of cut down on that triangle up at the top that's just kind of blank space. Yeah, kind of, yeah, they're just tighten it up to look like it's all about them. 
I, I'm a little confused. Yeah, exciting. On the um, the where the uh, vertical, the large vertical is in the left side of the middle when it comes down to the um, the dark part of the uh, where the kids are. You know, there's a there's a sort of diagonal line that's uh, sort of soft, um, and I'm just confused as to. Uh, I see the inside of the of the sort of cab, you know, by their faces and stuff, and then I see the the uh, sort of big column in the back, and, and but I don't know how. It's like, is that the edge of what is that the edge of there is what i'm confused looks like about the arm of the of the ride like the mechanism that actually lifts the car up and down that's what it is um no i'm talking about in the in the image that is cropped now um the uh, like front if you look at the the front girl's nose and you go straight up you come to a diagonal that runs all the way. Yeah, no, no, up more. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, that one. And if you go and it runs, you know, up to the right and down to the left. Yeah, that line. What is that? That that. So that's that's uh, <clears throat> I think it's mechanism. Yes, it's part of this cross beam. Yes, yeah, what's holding up the car? It's a carnival ride, right? So yes. yeah, it's got all yeah. sorts of moving parts and stuff like that. So, um, and and you know, I your the feedback on a tighter crop is is well taken. I mean, you you know, because obviously, you know, typically you want to fill the frame with your subject, right? You know, so there are all sorts of interesting crops that you could do to really really get in there. Um, there's something to be said for. The wider crop here because it does it it does help place the yeah. viewer you're at a fair or you're at some kind of carnival ride or something to that effect i mean so there's pros and cons to either of these crops is what where i'm headed so i i and you know daryl I'll, I'll say that uh, even with the wider crop we just go back to the way it was just to, for a moment it sent it <laughs> Uh, let's do this. Original, thank you. There. Um, it looks like either with the, the, you know, the timing of the light or with post-processing, my eye is drawn to the girls. I mean, on one hand, it's, it's a human face and the human eye is just attracted to another human face. But it looks like this area around the girls was perhaps brightened or, you know, a vignette was added around it. But this, you know, it kind of gives you that environmental portrait. What were they doing? What what was going on around it? Yes. Yeah. But there's a lot to be said for that tighter crop. You have fill right. the frame with the girls. And so I, from my perspective, I I don't know if there's really a wrong answer on the crop. Um, yeah, in this I, photo, I I had a, as I mentioned, I had cropped it down. There was there were some other um, distractions. And it was in color originally. Those cars are green, but it, the color just wasn't working for me. And so I played with it and I played with the crop. And unfortunately, the bean that was being asked about, I looked through my other images and the bean was always there. So this was the best of a bunch of images that I took. Yeah, I a bunch of people going the by. The beam is less distracting when you have the environmental portrait than it is when you get up close. Yeah. I like the shape of the car, you know, uh, I think that the the sort of first go around of cropping left and right took away some of the distraction, but kept that and there's a sort of sense of motion, you know, in in the car itself that uh, is pretty good. Yeah. Even if you kept the original crop, I was just concerned about that reflection that's on that that left side, it was kind of bright. Maybe if it was toned down a little bit. Actually, That's I kind of like I the crop that you have there, Don. Which, uh, so I think it was Patty that was talking, which 
Which bright spot were you talking about? Okay, it's in the upper oh, left up here? third of the quadrant. There's that um, brightness. Okay. Um, almost white. It's probably the brightest other than the back seat of the where the gr back girl is sitting it's um, it's next to being the brightest and I, I was just wondering if it could just be toned down just a little bit yeah that part right there as we can try. that's if you keep a, the wide crop yeah one thing i was thinking yeah about, with, that looks with, better with the wider crop you do get more of a sense of motion from the blurriness of the car. Good point. Yeah, as opposed to on the tighter crop, it becomes more static, you know, because the the faces are very crisp. Um, so yeah. in some ways, it's nice to get that little sense of motion that you get from seeing a little more of the car. See, no wrong answer on the crop here. Uh, but, you know, but again, great job on the capture of the girls. I really like the sharpness, obviously, you know, you're you're panning along or with your technique. Great job on on the capture of, of the girls and great timing. One thing I wanted to say on that, you know, the the structure part that's on top that you really can't do anything with, and you it's just there. If they could blacken it, that would, and then you crop to uh, make it just be a sort of a ragged border of darkness, yeah. might be interestingly different. Just out of curiosity, how would you do that? I'm not sure. Immediately, I don't know if I, John, you, it you're, a different you're color? good at technique. There are a few different techniques you could use. Um, you know, for example, just a real quick play with this. Uh, so basically, you saw that I've just a real, just a real rough edit across it, right? And then what we could do is we come up here and we can intersect the math mask with a luminous ring, and we want to drag from the left-hand side because we want to keep the darks and I want to focus on the brighter areas. So I'm telling it to apply the mask to the brighter areas. So you can see where the darks are turning, you know, the pink magenta right. is where the mask will apply. So we'll just try something like that just to, just to get it going. So again, up here now we can drag down the highlights a little bit that starts to get a little bit darker. We can drag down the exposure, but this is where it can get a little tricky. Because when you drag the exposure down, it can change the tones significantly. So it's not just darkening it with the solid gray necessarily. So you gotta, gotta be careful with it, but you know, just bring it down a you know, half stop. So see how much darker it gets. But just that alone, yeah, I think maybe Fred, that's what you're talking about. It just would just minimize the the distraction, if you will. I was thinking of really blackening it, but that's hard yeah. to do. It, yeah, and that's where it it does, you know, because that's that's where I was saying if you drag the exposure down too much, you, you, you can then still you try to play. Yeah, yeah. So there, you know, there's you pull down the black point down as well. But if this is where you got to really play with the masking and and because otherwise it just yeah, becomes just a black blob, blob right? Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. So, but yeah, you just play with these different techniques and it can it can just help minimize distractions, basically. But yeah, like, you know, for me, I don't know. To me, uh, it, it sure darkening it, you know, would help bring more attention to the bright area of the girls. Um, but for me, the more important thing was what you did capture, which was you got that moment in time. It's a sharp on the faces, great expressions, and, and you captured the the joy of the moment very well. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't usually do um, people because <laughs> I'm not very good at it because I need more practice at it, but um, appreciate the feedback. The best thing about this is if we do this, John will give us the lessons that we need for Lightroom. That, that helps. See? I missed See? it. My screen froze. I had to go back and come, go out and come back in. <laughs> well, well, there's many opportunities coming up. Yeah, if Addy, you'll see lots more. So, did so? What was decided on this image? 
with the options? Uh, it's really up to the artist. Oh, okay. There, there was, yes, yeah, so yeah, we, we provided Daryl some feedback that he can, you know, as with all of my advice anyway, the way I put it, I offer advice, use or abuse it as you see fit. I'm, my feelings will not be hurt. I love that capture. That's just that, you know, that, that was perfect. So you're talking about this one that we're looking at now? No, I mean, the, the, the girls in the, in that ride. So here we are looking at a, a swan. No, it's a duck. No, a goose. It's, it's a goose. goose. I own this one as well. This is more yeah. my, my wheelhouse. Who wants to offer the, the first critique? I love the reflection. I think that's great. I would be kind of curious if this were my shot, I might try and maybe bring up the vibrance a little bit or play with the tone a little bit. What we're talking about here is just, yeah, so as I, I'm gonna do it really bad. So you can see what the vibrance does to the image. It, it makes it pop a little bit. Um, and as with all these sliders, you go too far, and usually it's a really bad idea. Can you, it, it, does, does he have detail in the black? If you uh, lighten up the black a little bit, it's so black looking. It looks like. Uh, so you can definitely see there is detail. So, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, well, let's, let's put it this way. On my screen, it shows up. Yes, there's definitely detail. It looks like the blacks are, have or the shadows have definitely already been raised a bit they were yeah I, I would i would keep going with that i think uh well see that's that's with the challenge with the shadows right so yeah, you know yeah. here i pulled them all the way up and it well, really flattens out the image so going that far might not yes. be what we want yes. but then we can balance that by pulling down the blacks little bit and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm pressing on the Windows key or sorry, the Windows machine, holding down the Alt key, which gives me this overlay. And that tells me where I'm starting to get to pure black where there's no detail. And you know, so that's setting my black point, if, so to speak. And to do the same thing with the whites, pull the whites up a little bit until I start seeing a little bit of the, the blown out whites. What about there? So what I'm doing is I'm that's stretching out better. I think that's better. Stretching it out a little bit, adding contrast is really what I'm I'm doing here. What about adding a little bit of a, an adjustment brush to adjust the lighting and just the head and the eye? We can we can do that. Um, I'm going to suggest that on this particular image, it, when we start doing that, we are probably going to start introducing some artifacts we don't want. Okay. But we could, you know, just for the sake of display. So you were saying uh, to make some adjustments here. Uh, added a brush. What were you thinking of doing to the head? I would say just brighten it because the body is so bright, and the and the eye is getting lost in the brightness of the body. Ah. So just to do the adjustment, adjust the exposure on the on the just the head a little bit. No, but around especially around the eye. Well, let's start with the eye. Let's see what we can do with that. So if we go up here and give me a brush. Going to just on the eye. We're going to play with this a little. So I don't want to bring the exposure up. I do want to bring up bring up the whites. You can see where maybe it's it's real subtle, but you can see where it's really bringing out that catch light and mm -hmm. also the white rim on the eyelid. Yep. Yeah. Bringing the white whites up quite a bit. Another thing that you can do with eyes to really help is maybe add a little bit of clarity. Again, this you is, go. you can see it really well now in Zoom, uh, but again, you don't want to go up too much. But just that little bit, now if I turn off that mask, you can see the difference that it made on the eye. Mm. I was, uh, that's probably yeah, more than I would do, yeah. quite frankly. Maybe pull this down. Oh, what we could do, toggle that on. And now, if we come back out, 
you can see that makes the eye really stand out. It, you see where the white around the eyelid, it's, it's a little unnatural at this point. You know, so probably go in and tighten up the you know, the, the mask just a little bit. But this one is a, it's a challenging image to edit. You know, Daryl mentioned he brought up the, the shadows already because in what I'm assuming by the angle of the sun, this is probably pretty close to midday and that's obviously the harshest light you could deal with. Um, and it was backlit, you know, the, the light is coming from the top left from right. behind the bird. So the camera's on the shadow side. So to get all that detail, you got to really pump up those, those shadows to get the detail back. You know, it's a challenging image to edit. I think Daryl did a good job with, with what he had. So, you know, the, <laughs> I spent the most amount of time on his image. There was, so this, this is a, a question of, um, this is not photojournalism per se, but there was probably mm, 500 little specks in the water that I probably spent 25, 30 minutes um, because they were distracting, getting rid of. Um, and I, I got to a point where I was kind of happy, but I, you know, I think I was the trying to deal with the eye and the head, everything you were describing, John. Um, the, the, the thoughts on using the white and clarity, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. It, but I was, I kept playing with it and couldn't, still couldn't get to where I was happy with it. Yeah, Carol? it's it's tough. Yes. Did, did you try converting this to black and white to see what it would look like? I have not. Okay. That's, that's an interesting suggestion, actually, because I like black and white. I was wondering what if you try to increase either the, I don't know the contrast or sharpness in the feathers, what whether that would help or look strange, I'm not sure. The black and white, we can really pump up the contrast to really help with that separation. That's interesting, I like that. And pulling down the highlights, you pull out a little bit more detail in those feathers. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I don't know, black and white works better because again, with the, with the harsh lighting condition, right. the black and white is a more interesting choice, maybe. I'll go back and play with it. I like it. Great. Any other comments before we move on? Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. It's not a self-portrait, is it? No, no, it's a stranger. <laughs> I just happened to be fishing around sunset. Nice silhouette. I love it. And I love what he's doing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's very peaceful. That's part of what intrigued me. It is. Uh, and then again, this is another great environmental portrait, if you will. Uh, really gives you a sense of that late, I'm going to assume late evening. Yeah. Just that wonderful yeah, golden hour color that's coming in. The things once seen cannot. This big bright spot down here. I might crop out that chair. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the right. I mean, I'm it, sorry, crop out which? Crop out the chair out the, on the deck. Oh. I don't think you need that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I went back and forth on that. I think you're probably crop right. It <laughs> but, uh, crop it in. Yeah, yeah, keep going past that post. Keep going. Past the post? Yeah, right there. And maybe from the bottom up above that stump. Oh, yeah. Up above that stump on the bottom. See the stump? Yeah, bring it up right there. There you go. One of the things I liked that made it not just a silhouette is the um, the light that was just cropped out at the bottom that's in the dark part of the, you know, uh, deck or... Um, yeah, down, down at the bottom middle, not not the uh, not that, but uh, in the middle there, the uh, not sure. I guess the light is coming from the upper right, isn't it? Uh, yep. That's kind of a nice. It, I mean, it adds a depth dimension. Well, to, there, to, there are other ways what, to deal with it. 
Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to keep that dock with that interesting light, you could use uh, the, the healing brush. It could disappear. Yeah. Richard, I, I, I would recommend to see if we can apply the golden rule to this to this photo. I'm sorry, how you say that again? Uh, do what? Uh, apply the golden rule. This, this, uh, currently, we have a uh, third, rule, rule of the third trade. Right? You apply oh. the golden rule, see what happens. Ah, ah I see what you're saying. So that's pretty much what we've got. This overlay here is uh, actually the golden ratio. Uh, so it's you know one one point six to one to one point six, not exactly the golden spiral, which I think is what you were talking about. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So everybody knows how I'm doing this, right? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so. Is this Lightroom or? or uh... It's absolutely Lightroom. So uh, basically, I'm in the crop tool. I'm in develop module, and I, I clicked on the crop tool. And when I do that, I can press the O key, and I can get different overlays. Hmm. So the, you know, this is just the, the rule of thirds, for example, just a grid pattern, diagonal. So there, are, and this is this is my favorite one. I mean, this is just the my golden ratio. But if I press O, I get the golden spiral. And when I hold the shift key, I change the orientation of the overlay. So I'm holding the shift key and pressing O, and it changes. So I could put because the idea, if you're not familiar with the golden golden ratio, so the idea is that this is effectively a Fibonacci based sequence. And I think it was the Greeks that identified this first, but basically this is a pattern that's commonly found in nature and it's usually applicable to things that humans find more appealing. So it's golden ratio. So anyway, the idea is that you want your main interest of attention be in this general area of this you know, small swirl. So if you do shift O, you can find out where would my interest be? That would be a good one. And the idea is that, again, with the golden ratio, you can use this to help your, manage your composition in your crop so that you find it, uh, your areas of interest will follow that swirl around the image. So, so what if you I think Holly is talking about is if we do this, yep. Yeah. and unlock the crop so we could do that so now you put that overlay on it you can see how it can help you with with cropping and, and managing your account. you know it, it, again this is it's not like you have to put everything on the line, but the idea is that the, that line as it swirls around the image, it will help you manage where you might, might want more appealing parts of the composition. Howie, was that pretty much what you were thinking of or was it something else? Uh, yes, it is. Any other comments on this? Yeah. I I like the image that my, uh, what I would suggest is that my eye keeps getting drawn to the bottom left corner, that squiggly line, black line. And then mm -hmm. I see where the poles in the water, but it leading out. And then it's, I think it's where the, the line enters the water um, is distracting to me. And um, there are the underneath the pier, I know stuff in the water. So, I mean, I think, the focus for me is really on the individual, the rod, the waves in the water. I'm getting distracted by the black little squiggly line from right there, yeah, along there out to that puddle. Um, it yeah. follows to the left almost by the pole there. 
Yeah, Daryl, I'll tell you, I, I am also one of those people that have no problem with cleaning up foam and other distractions on the surface of the water. Is, this is one it, is kind of... Is um, that the reflection of the rock? It is. It oh, is. is it? Oh. Yeah. So that's where certainly you could eliminate it, but it would kind of... It runs the risk of ruining the 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 reinforcing the the calmness of that water and the reflection of that rod. Yeah, because I I couldn't tell if it was it was the rod until you said it was a rod. Yeah. So when you zoom in, you oh. can certainly see you know you, you can even see the reflection of the fishing line. Oh, okay. Pretty impressive. What what's the stuff in the water by the pole on the left? Is that part of the? As probably just you know, oh, like grasses stuff. and stuff okay. like that. All right, and that's that's one of those. I'm sure that, you know, Daryl. This your image. You would have spent half an hour just way too much time cloning, <laughs> cloning those out. I'm with you, my man. I'm with you. I love the image. I I think it's a, a fantastic you know moment that was captured, and I like the silhouette, almost monochrome feel to it. Thank you. Oh, that's also mine. Very nice. Yeah, something about the just the shape of it, and then I worked to isolate it from the background. But um... so, how did you isolate it? Well, it, it was shot uh, uh, kind of with a wide aperture, so it didn't have a lot of depth of field to begin with. So the background was kind of blurred and, and sort of and mostly green tone. So it was somewhat easy to mask it out. And then I, that, then I just blurred it some more and darkened it to isolate the flower even more. Um, but basically, uh, it was sort of blurred and masked. But it was, as I say, it, was, it, had, it didn't have a lot of depth of field to begin with, so it wasn't that hard to, um, to isolate it. I love the backlight coming through the flowers. It's really nice. Are these tiger lilies by any chance? They are lilies, I'm thinking. <laughs> My botany is rather clean. Yeah. So, uh, I I um, uh, maybe tiger lilies, yeah. yeah I, I say that because I know we've got some tiger lilies in our yard, but ours, you know, same same bud format and, and shape and everything, but ours are orange. Mm. Yeah, they, they've got the spots and everything in it. Those may be uh, Tinkerbell uh, lilies, possibly. Peter so, Pan joke, Peter Pan joke. Never mind. Yeah, he... Um, so that one of the things to look out for on high contrast images like this one is chromatic aberration. Mm. And I didn't really notice it much when I zoomed out, but when you zoom in on it, yeah. you could probably see a little bit of the blue tinging right along the edge of this white mm -hmm. petal. Yeah. So that, that and on other parts, and it's interesting, just uh, <laughs> Tell you what, when you start digging into the physics of this stuff, it can really take you down a rabbit hole. So on one side of your object, the aberration will be like a blue. The other side will be a, a green or, or purple. Or it'll be like a green on one side and magenta on the other. Yeah, aren't they like chromatic opposites? Pretty, uh, exactly. And, and, and that's because of the way that the light Splits when it you know when it's coming through the aperture and, and actually it's bending around that sharp edge of your of your uh, subject that's in the image and it's just really interesting physics. It's really easy to fix if one were interested. And you just come down to detail and Lightroom and that lens corrections. The lens corrections go to manual. Click the eyedropper. Put it over that little blue right there, click, and it almost completely disappears. Mm 
Now on the profile, yeah, that's, that's pretty it, minor. Uh, it, it was, it was very minor. Chromatic aberration. I've had, well, it depends on your lens too, but I've had some that was really like. Now you know, this is, uh, it, it, and Jack, I think you were the one to mention the backlighting on the subject. It Chromatic aberration really rears its head on a backlit high contrast subject. Yeah. yeah. So this one, again, this one looks like it was taken in the, in the bright of this midday sun. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. And I'm wondering, okay, okay, I see what's going on here. So I'm gonna play with this one for just a bit. I haven't done any editing on this before just now. But I'm just gonna try and experiment. I'm just gonna take a brush. And I'm just gonna highlight some of the brighter areas of the petals. And I'm not being very precise here. You know, if this were something that I were trying to edit for a portfolio, the, the time spent on the detail of the mask would be well paid. But anyway, so now that I've highlighted the brighter areas, if I bring down the highlights a little bit, it helps balance out the exposure. They're still brighter than the rest of the image, but it's, it's cut just a little bit. You know, me. You're bringing down the highlights. Yeah, bringing down the highlights just a little bit, not a whole lot. So now that we got that there, let me just turn this on and off. So there's the original. Mm -hmm. You know, with the mask, it, it helps balance out the exposure just a little bit. Um, makes it less obvious that it was bright, harsh, midday sun. I was thinking uh, the the backlit quality, uh, there was a certain almost translucence uh, to the image without it being blown out. I, I thought it was pretty effective. Yeah, I and mean, all the details there, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, there is no lost detail at all. Um, I think it did a good job of isolating it. it you know, I, I don't know what was there before, but uh, your, your masking and technique on isolating it from what was there. Because you know, I wasn't sure if this was you know, like a, a planner that you had on a window and you just blacked out, yeah. you know, put a black cardboard or something behind it or what, you know, so I wasn't sure how you did that. And I actually was taken in a botanical garden um, and there's a pond there and there were lilies growing on the pond, but the, the background originally was actually um, mostly just sort of some green vegetation, um, which was, as I say, somewhat blurred to begin with. Uh, so no, it wasn't, um, uh, and, and, and it was, the sun was coming from behind, as you're saying. Uh, but no, it was taken in natural a uh, natural setting. It wasn't, um, and then I just kind of masked out the background. It took, it took me a little time to do that, but uh, and then sort of masked it out, and basically blurred it some more and, and darkened it. And that's how it ended up looking the way it does. So you talk about a natural setting, right? Yeah. So my mom wanted. She's got a yard full of flowers. <laughs> one of her passions. And she wanted to start taking photos of the flowers, you know, because they're pretty. She spends time and energy making them pretty. So she wants to take pic pictures to remind herself of them. She was asking, you know, what can I do to make them just look better? Because they're, they're always so cluttered. So I went and took some out of focus shots of greenery and printed them large so that she could pop them up behind the flower and then take a photo of the flower with everything guaranteed to be blurred out behind it because it was just another photo that had been enlarged. It's one of the tricks that I picked up people that do flowers a lot more than I do. Any other comments? Nice photo. I'm in, even more impressed now that I heard what you got to go through in order to um, deal with the background.
Free photography. So this is Kristen. This one's mine. Um, I shot this one on film with my Minolta. And this is in um, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. I was there for work a few months ago, and this is one of the bazaars. So I shot it, um, as you see it, is how I shot it. I didn't do any kind of editing or anything on it. So just kind of welcome any feedback on how I could make it better. Only from the mind of Minolta. <laughs> All right, Kristen, you might not be old enough to remember those commercials. <laughs> no, it's, it's my dad, it's my late dad's camera I inherited. So I have no idea. It's like from 1981 or something. <laughs> my, yeah. my, first, my first camera in college, this is now back in uh, 1970, actually, uh, was a Minolta SRT 101. I have to remember that. Nice. Uh, I loved it, actually, for a long time. Yeah, this is a great camera. This is the X700. So it was the last of their manual focus series, uh, which is kind of fun to, to learn with. So what film did you use? Uh, I think it's Fujifilm, like Ultramax 200 ISO, I think. Okay. And how did you scan it? I just had it done over at Ace Photo in Ashburn. Uh, I had and, them process it onto CD. And they, they did the negative scan? They did the negative scan. And this was like the standard definition one. So I think it's at maybe like 300 PPI. Okay. Yeah, because when I when I saw this one, I was like, okay, this one photographer either did a good job of the, with applying a filmic look, or it was a film scan. So, to answer my question. <laughs> the only other question I had, well, uh, the other question that immediately popped into mind. All right, this looks like a a baker's um, stand. And I'm wondering, are, th are these bread bowls? They are. That's an interesting way to make a bread bowl. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's made to be a bread bowl. Yeah, I had some friends ask, because I posted this online, and they asked if it was wood. And I said, no, that was, that was bread. Any comments? Feedback for Kristen? I, I assume that is Kristen, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, PD you, gave it away. Is that... Are those edible products? Yeah, I didn't buy any, but yeah, you can you can eat them. I'm oh, sorry. What what country did you say this was again? This is Kyrgyzstan. Oh, Kyrgyzstan. Mm. Yeah, Central Asia in in Bishkek. That's the capital, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's got a really nice that film. Yeah, it gives it a really nice look. Um, given the location, I guess. I, having a little more light and uh, on on the people themselves and their what they're wearing might have been uh, additional fun you know on the picture without I mean you know the obviously the star of the picture is all of the breads but uh, the people uh, can be interesting too yeah yeah see that's a challenge with film scans and I've done a few of them myself is there's only so much you could push <laughs> the scan because uh, it's definitely not you don't have all the rich detail that you get from a, a raw digital file for example so you can see whereas we pull up the exposure it's really not giving us the effect that we might get from a, a, a digital raw by pulling up the whites just a little bit and yeah might help give uh, the effect that you're looking for jack yeah Maybe a little uh, contrast might kind of take some of that white haze-ish, or I don't know. Uh, I, I guess dehaze. Now that I I said have said haze, maybe that would. Uh, yeah, and that's where you know certainly you could you know as you apply a little dehaze, you get a little more of that contrast back, and it starts to look like what we appreciate as you know, sharp digital photography. And you know, I had a similar thought when I first saw it. It does look a little flat. So how would we bring out some of that contrast and that detail? But it's still, yeah, it wasn't the, the flatness right. for me so much as just because uh, they're like the uh, I think it think it's a guy that's sort of facing us. You know, being able to uh, no, I, mean, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> her name is Pat, or his name is Pat. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, or 
or Leslie or uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, just being able to see them a little more was all. I didn't feel like. I mean, the as far as flatness, geez, with the bread. I mean that that depth of field. Uh, yeah, I I wasn't seeing. It wasn't the flatness. Well, really. it was. When I say flat, I mean there's, it's not a whole lot of contrast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a thought that maybe HRD, HRD, uh, HDR. Yeah, HDR, maybe a better uh, for this picture. Or perhaps what, what do you think? Well, Kristen did say she was using film. Uh, and, you know, she, <laughs> going back to my old days of film. It's not like you can snap off five or six shots without consequence because you've only got 36 images typically on, on a roll of 35 millimeter film that I used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only I, but I think uh, about it for photo, and not the photo itself, but the technique we use that I do. Usually, um, uh, if, we, if I can have uh, the use of HDR, I can, I can you know, um, because the I usually take three or four frames at a time, so that can be balanced out uh, somehow in a you know, live background. But that, that's only my experience. So yeah, and and Howie, what I think you're you're one of the things that you would benefit from that technique here was that bright background, because the the real subject here is are these interesting vendors selling their their goods. So how do we how do we focus the viewers' viewers' attention on those really interesting bread creations and and the vendors? I was going to suggest maybe cropping to the from the left in from the left some. The, we could try the person, that. The person walking by, I think you could probably crop in, you know, a couple of inches to where the bread. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, even yeah. in. Because right there, you get, you now have the focus on the individuals and the bread. Um, yeah, yeah, and we still got this bright area back here in the back as a challenge. You know, because again, that human eye is attracted to bright parts of your image. Tone down the highlights and the whites, maybe some. We could try that I, again. Uh, we're dealing with a film scan, so there's losing the guy over on the left has uh, you know now the the picture is a bit more static you know i mean yes he is he is only we only see half of him but it's more like an icon of movement and uh sort of environmental cues you know there's somebody walking by that um cuz there's almost a <clears throat> sort of motion effect from the repeated circles that start in the bottom right and progress across the image you know there's almost movement in that and the guy is sort of it's like echoing it or resonating it in a way it sort of adds a sort of dynamic quality to uh, to the picture like there's something going on so he the, the, he does I, I assume it's a guy um, he does add a bit of a street photography element to the image i'd almost i'd almost go back to the crop and took the guy off on the left and bring that bring the top down i'm not sure you need all of that top i think you could come closer to you know bring it in bring it in bring it in lose some of that top i think you could yeah right bring it down mm -hmm. you could lose some of those images those bread rolls at the top yeah. we could yeah yeah I, I just think it focuses more on what's going on in the, in the scene it takes out yeah, that that ceiling there. Yeah, we want to be careful to leave a little bit of breathing space around. A little above breathing the head. space, yeah, that might yeah. be a little too far. But I'm saying, yeah, that other that ceiling is too much. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You know, I would highlight their faces a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking the same thing that you know, your eye gets Those, drawn that to role. the bread baskets because they're light, and the people are dark, so they, they yeah, that's run away from them. And that's that's the challenge that we were looking at earlier, right? So if we bring up the exposure, you start to lose oh, yeah. the blacks here. Because again, it's it's a film scan, folks. I mean, it's not a, a raw file by any stretch. Uh, you know, I so just, it, just I mean, not highlight the faces. Yeah. Sorry. You could. <laughs> I, 
If we could, and let's let's give that a shot. Let's see see how that looks. Yeah. I want a new right. brush. Now, yeah, to me, the uh, yeah, the targeting the them, then right. you reduce yeah. that whole hazy effect. Yeah, so you can bring up the whites a little bit. But again, this is a case where if you start to bring up the exposure, it, you really start to wash out the skin. Mm -hmm. At least you can see but, them now and maybe bring the, the lights if down. If you the brought back it up, you, you brought the shadows up, and then you did some dehaze to get more which sort of does a contrast thing as well, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, definitely dehaze does that as well. Um, yeah, so you, I guess the real, for me, film scans are a, a bit of a unique breed. Uh, I mean, you could certainly do like high resolution drum scans of, of digital or, or uh, of negatives and get really highly detailed if it files for as that would really help you with the push and pull of this. But again, it's what's in the negative, and there's only so much that you can pull out of that negative to deal with in digital processing. You know, as far as the dehaze on this one, I don't know, I could go either way. I kind of like that filmic look. Um, and when we bring up the dehaze to, to bring back that contrast, it certainly gives it a more modern. It looks like it was created with a more modern digital camera. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but maybe Kristen was really going for that filmic look. It says, look, that this this is old school photography here. Yeah. I don't, you know, I, I guess where I'm going is I'm not sure there's a really, really correct way to process this one. And the only thing that I would be careful about might be, might be, um, White balance. That John, would be just a little bit too blue, but what would happen if you well, sharpened it just a tad? And I think that might help with the the individual person. With sharpening, you you know, just yeah, plain with, old sharpening. Yeah. Very, so if you, if you did, you know, just isolate the. Yeah, sharpening probably isn't what you want to do. Yeah, um, I mean that you were talking about the quality is sort of uh, um, creamy almost comes to mind, but because it's, you know, continuous rather than the digital that we use a lot, it, it has certain a certain look and feel to it. Um, and, you know, the warmth there, I think it's probably we got tungsten lights um, up, you know, at the top lighting the I mean, there's daylight coming in, but, and the, uh, yeah, the warmth of the overall light goes, I think, nicely with the bread itself, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, and frankly, I was just offering some ideas for consideration. I didn't see any real big negative on the original composition. Uh, I, I thought it was a well-captured great scene. Um, environmental portrait the the background yes being so bright it definitely you know, can pull the eye away that you, you saw that just a little bit of you know highlight reduction back there um you know really made a difference i think but uh, you know overall I, I nice capture great yeah thank you all for the feedback it's it's interesting and fun and challenging shooting on film because you really do only kind of have like one shot and uh i'm trying to figure out you know how i can take technically good but still compelling shots when i'm limited to film with it so I that's the thing about film it definitely makes you slow down and think about it right you know i keep finding myself trying to look at the the camera after to review my shot <laughs> think, wait a second i can't do that so yeah yeah it's, what's, it's, where's the lcd right yeah <laughs> well so where else did you go um other than kyrgyzstan on your trip that's so name. i was just in kyrgyzstan i was working so i was there for uh just about 10 days and uh it was my first time and it's it's a very very awesome city it's got very kind of it was gray and snowy so it was very sort of dreary post-soviet vibes then i felt like that was perfect for shooting on film so yeah and the month probably didn't uh give it a lot of light 
So uh, well, you, are you with state or uh, what? Yeah, yeah. So I was working out of the embassy there. I do. I was doing records management for them. So uh -huh. it's pretty fun. Image. Thank you. Make sure I'm. So this one's also mine, and this oh. is the film. <laughs> it is film, you said? No. Oh. This is this is um. I got a new lens for my Nikon recently, so I've been trying to build up my skill with that, and it's its own challenge so oh you got the 200 500 it's great lens great lens but very heavy yes <laughs> there you go yeah i got the 80 400 instead of the uh 200 to 500 it weighs half as much but still after a while it's like oh my god yeah <laughs> i bought the two to 500 had it for less than two weeks and sold it it was way too heavy yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to go on a whale watching tour this weekend and I was debating taking it, but I don't think I can hold it for that long. And I yeah, without a tripod, it's it's a little rough. Definitely. Um so all right, so who's got the first comment on this one? You know, your question about film, uh not so much uh, when I look at the branch on the bottom that that is, you know, real sharp, but the bird itself, I was kind of going, oh, that, that has a sort of almost, when I say filmy, I mean, the quality of film-based images. Uh, uh, and that is, was that a Cooper's? Uh, I think, or a red-shouldered. I have a really hard time telling the difference between the two. And, and yeah, right, and, and what gender they are and what stage of life, and yeah. That's, that's a red-shouldered. Okay. That's too big to be a Cooper sock. Yeah, he he was fat. Big. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing you can do with bird photography, which I really like, um, I usually lighten the eye a little bit. I don't know how experienced you are with Lightroom, but um birds tend to look kind of dead-eyed. So just take a little bit of a brush and just make it bring the shadows up just a tad. Sometimes that gives them a little bit more life. Um, and uh, kind of, I'm gonna, there you go. That's yeah. Now it. I'm going to take this all the way up to the max just to show. Right. Uh, Cause Cecilia, or is it Audrey? Audrey. Audrey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, I, got, I got all the people off on a different monitor. So, <laughs> um, so th this is a Audrey brings up a really good point and, and a lot of people new to bird photography and I'm not an expert, but birds have irises. It can be very dark on, on the iris, but if you bring up, bring up the shadows a little bit, it really helps accentuate it. Um, and really it, it, like Audrey said, brings life to it. And Audrey, you had another point you were making. Oh, yes. Um, the other thing that I do with bird photography, which not everyone does, is you can use Lightroom to select the background as opposed, hopefully it'll pick up the background and not the bird, and desaturate your background a little bit because it's very, it's got leaves, it's got a lot of stuff, and sometimes if you select the background and desaturate it a little bit, um, it'll it'll let the bird yeah, invert it. There we go. Yeah. And then get the desaturate it a little bit. Or, well, um, first thing I'm going to do. Yeah. Try to maybe, recapture a little bit of the tail. Yeah. There you go. Yep. That's um, good. Now, this is this is not the perfect mass, folks. It's just quick and dirty to illustrate. So uh, you were saying to desaturate? Desaturate it a little bit. And um, also, um, take the, the uh, texture down a little bit and maybe play with the clarity a little bit, decrease it, because the focus should be on the bird and not the background. So um, you want to try and bring that down. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm, I'm doing this just to help illustrate again, because not everybody can see the monitor very well, but uh, the idea is just grab the slider and take it till you see it having an effect and then undo it a little bit. Yep. And then look away for a couple minutes and then come back to it. Yep. And you just have to play with 
trying to bring the bird out of the branchiness. I mean, unless you yeah. want to spend hours messing around right. with get trying to get rid of some of those branches, you know, the more you can bring it out, the better. I think I would be tempted to uh, see if I could lose the leaf, you know, right by the head, but like uh, putting sky in there in its place. Um, yeah, that's uh, that would be a challenge. I'll tell you that. Well, I mean, I've done it's just it, at the edge is where the real challenge right. is. And I do it in Photoshop and I kind of do it manual and like the hard way, probably. But uh, just because it would, uh, you know, in that part, that's sort of the key part of the of the bird, you know, the head, that, that profile, the beak. And so forth, and the uh, the leaf kind of steals some of that. But uh... true, uh, yeah. I, I was just saying that I, yeah, Photoshop helps definitely because you, know, you don't have the edge masking tools in Lightroom that you can get in Photoshop. And making making sure that this this mask edge along yeah yeah the head is catching all the feathers the right way yeah make it look yeah. natural right and yeah i mean i've been lost down in the pick in pixel land it's like what was i doing where am i what day is it uh yeah when you zoom back out it's sometimes you know you you can't even see see those things until yeah. you get into a review thing where people zoom on up and then they can see, you know, every little, every little. So thing. it sounds like what both, you know, Audrey and Jack are both really uh, zeroing in on how do you help separate the subject from the background? And that, again, is helping guide the viewer to what you want them to look at, which is the bird. So while Jack was talking a little bit, uh, you saw that I actually did go back and select the bird and just bring up the whites a little bit and um, the exposure just a touch. You can see the effect that that had, you know, given yeah. on what appears to be a cloudy day, that can help. And again, this is one of those techniques. If you take it too far, it looks really obvious. <laughs> so, you know, be be really careful, you know, with how did much you, take you do the exposure it. Exposure down on the background too, John. Yeah, we bit. did the desaturation. We can certainly try taking the exposure down a little bit. Again, it's one of those things you, you know, just a light touch on the controls is probably all that's needed. Yeah, because it'd be easy to make it into a pretty gloomy day if you're not careful, you know? It, yeah, yeah, there's definitely that. And then, you know, it'll, it, 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 the, the viewer's eye is going to figure, the brain's going to be going, there's something odd about this image. What is it? And, and, and it, yeah, well, the, it's because there's just too much, too much unnatural. Yeah, separation the big between bird the, with the dark sky exactly yeah. exactly yeah. but you know just that little subtle addition of brightness like uh, you know turning up the white or maybe the exposure you know on the subject alone will help separate it from that background make it pop a little bit i'm gonna be the crop police i think it needs to be cropped from the left take out that big tree yeah uh, that that take could out help that big tree yeah so if we if we made this a I think this is a one-to-one -one crop is what it looks like. But if we I'll start with this just to mm -hmm. yeah. play with it. Yeah, because it draws your eye to the bird and the background goes away a little bit. And you know, Kristen, I'm gonna tell you, you've got you what Nikon do you use? The camera? The um D seventy five hundred. Okay, so it's got uh, spot focus, I believe, on that model. Seventy five hundred is a, a good model. Six, six or eight different kinds of focus. <laughs> yeah, so is that uh, this could be tricky because a you've got a long lens. You were and you're shooting this at five hundred millimeters, right? And as you probably know, holding that steady yeah. <laughs> is a challenge. Um, so spot focus or spot focus can be a benefit and a curse, mm -hmm. but the challenge here is you've got nice focus on the 
or part of the bird. But when we look at the eye, it's out of focus. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, and and, and the eye. This is one of the, one of the reasons I I haven't really gotten masterful at wildlife photography. A, the time that it takes to get out there and just spend time in the nature to get wildlife photography. I got a day job. <laughs> I just ain't got time for that. But uh, it, it can be a real challenge to get cooperation from the subjects to hold still long enough where I can get a nice sharp eye. <laughs> yeah. Get out of the way of all those branches. Yeah. 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 And I'm still struggling. I've heard, I've heard it go both ways where some people swear by shooting wildlife like this when they're kind of static uh, in aperture mode. And then everyone else is like, you have to do shutter mode for wildlife because they're going to move. So I, I think this was probably in shutter mode. Um, yeah, shutter priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely, I don't know why. I just, I noticed that all my photos tend to have that kind of lack of focus in parts of them, and I'm not. So, sure. and that's where spot focus. You might be able to, maybe. I, I'm just offering some ideas here. Right. <laughs> uh, but use that that spot focus to aim in on the head, or I think the 7500 also has uh, like a, a D9 or D25 where it'll do the, the spot focus, but it'll also use focus points around it, yeah. and which is, you know, especially for like birds in flight or for me, like um, air show photos, using like a D9 or D25 uh, focus really helps keep the important stuff in focus. And, and that Literally, way you just like put a, that a, over a, the head and you know everything's good. I, like I have a matrix a... one that's center a center weighted matrix or something like that. Yeah, have, the... that's that's for exposure. That's not the focus points. Oh, right. I think oh, what okay. John was talking right. about is the focus points. I've got a suggestion. I do pet photography, <laughs> and they don't sit still, and. If you can learn to shoot manual, that's your best thing. And what you want to do is if it's if it's static, it's okay to drop your shutter speed. But if you're doing where the bird's in flight or if something's moving, you got to have at least one one thousandth of a second. Yeah. And what, what I usually do is, you know, I, I, I play off my shutter speed and I set my aperture to where I want it to be. Sometimes I want a wide open aperture. And then I, many times I float my ISO. In other words, I can set my Nikon to an auto ISO. Yep. And that. that that's usually a good way to go. Yeah, with modern cameras, uh, recovering noise and ISO, you know, high ISO images is a, a really not a, a bad option. I mean, it, it, A, the noise is not as bad as it used to be with the high ISOs and digital photography, but they've come a long way. And modern algorithms can really do wonders with any of that noise in high ISO. And when I'm talking about high ISOs, I shoot with a DA50. I can take that up to ISO 6400 and barely see what? any noticeable yeah. noise in the images. It'll go up to 25,600. Yeah. But God help us. You know, I mean, then there's parts of the image that are, oh, but man. But uh, it, in uh, Mid Atlantic um, Photo Vision, I listened to, um, I'm going to probably butcher his name, <laughs> Ron Burnaby or a name like that, about wildlife shooting. And what he, what he said was, um, yeah, a thousandth or even a two thousandth. I'm shooting manual uh, and a fast shutter speed. And then, um, well, like I was shooting uh, bears at 2,000th of a second and at uh, f-stop of 7.1 and I had it on auto ISO and, and um, it worked out really well. You know, that was kind of the gist of what I got out of what he had to say because I was going at, at slower shutter speeds and uh, uh, you know even if you do have a heavy lens you know how far it can move at in a thousandth of a second is not too much or your subject move you know yeah 
Yeah, I was oh. back at my settings and I, so this one I shot at one five hundredth of a second, f-stop 7.1 and the, I think it was auto ISO at 200. And I'm almost certain I shot it in shutter priority. So I'm definitely going to play with manual. I've been a little hesitant because it's scary. <laughs> it's <laughs> not scary. Oh, wait, wait, I promise I am, you. <laughs> I am thoroughly confused. Kristen, you're, you're willingly picking up a Minolta film camera from the early 80s. <laughs> and you're you're concerned about manual mode? I know, I know. I just need to play with it. Maybe maybe the whale watching this weekend, I'll I'll play with it. All right. So you've gotten some really good tips, and I think that's the key. Basically, you know, if you go and you do any kind of research in wildlife photography, bird photography, um, high shutter speeds is what you want. Mm -hmm. And I, I I tend to agree. My when you get up above like one one thousandth of a second, and maybe even higher. You know, it, it, that's where your sharper images are going to come, because uh, much of the softness in wildlife imagery, at least for me, is technique. I'm I'm not able to hold the camera steady enough as I'm panning or as I'm as I'm using that 500 millimeter lens to zoom in on the, the subject. Uh, so that that fast shutter speed helps minimize my camera shake and my technique, and it also helps freeze the action that the animals are doing. Yeah. So it you know, go get that fast shutter speed, let that ISO float. Um, and, and I, I think it was, was it Patty that you were the same, you know, set the, the aperture, you know, cause that manages your depth of field. I, and obviously. I usually you know, like to shoot a, as wide as aperture as I can get away with. Yeah. And, but, and the further away I, the subject, the deeper your depth of field there. I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, bird, birds, small birds in particular, and usually use one twenty one two one twenty five one twenty five hundredth of a second to one thirty two hundredth of a second f8 with a floating iso and um you know not the, my 100 to 500 is 7.1 at the at the best so a lot of times i shoot f8 f11 and you know i've posted some of my shots and they're usually pretty sharp for birds in flight yeah ken your your shots are like what i'm aspiring to <laughs> they're incredible Thank so, you. Yeah, thank you all for the feedback. I, I really do appreciate it. You know, John, I'm going to reiterate what John said about your spot focus because, you know, if you don't, unless you have auto eye focus or what, you know, the, the, the learning the spot or that um, dynamic spot, I forget what it's called in Nikon. Yeah, the D9, D25. Yeah. If you can learn to, to to do those, that'll help and, and position your your focus point. So here we've got the seascape. Moody. Definitely. Yeah, I like the play of the sun off the, the surf coming in, I mean, the reflection of it. Was this Outer Banks, John? I don't know. Oh, I thought I saw your... Yep, not mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> John, this is Audrey. I think the main beams are kind of bullseyed. I would probably crop it a little bit so that it's a little off. You know what I said? Yeah, that seems to be like right bullseye. I would probably pull it one way or the other to, yeah. I get rid of the t the bright spot up to the edge too. Yep. All right, yep. which one are you looking at? This one? Top or right? Patty, was that you talking? Who, who was talking about the bright spot? I was because it was like right at the edge of the frame and I my eye just went there instead of the the beams coming through. Oh, oh you're talking about at the top? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so bringing that crop down from the top kind of helped minimize. And lift the horizon just a tad on the right because a little. Well, you think, huh? It's... Oh, look at that. Not much, but it was there.
So there are a couple of different, you know, I'm sure you folks know, this. there are a couple of different ways. I, you know, you can grab the, the rotate anchor point, it brings up that overlay. And you could also just use the ruler and drag it across your horizon. Automatically level. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other comments? Um, this is Doug. I think, um, what if you highlighted those waves in the middle through a, uh, either a small, you know, or a brush could do it, and then try to bring up the whites on those? Uh, that's, uh, that's one of the ideas that I was thinking of as well. I want to try a different technique here. So I'm going to do radial. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Hold down my shift key. That. So that I'm being a little bit anal. I'm going to intersect this with luminance range. I don't want the brighter parts. I don't want to bring up the weight background water too much. Really focusing on the, really the brighter parts of those. And I'm going to start by bringing up the whites. Yeah, we can go really crazy with it. Just a little bit. Doug, is that kind of where you were thinking of going? You want to take it further? What were you thinking? No, that looks good. And um, what if you adjusted the, yeah, I was going to say the exposure or the highlights a little bit brighter. Yeah, I was wondering if the exposure was brought up just a little bit. Yeah, I brought it up just a just a touch. We yeah. can a little bit more. And again, you know, if if we were doing this for real, we'd want to pop it. Probably want to take this all the way out to the end. That was yeah. gonna be my comment. <laughs> What about light vignette? Again, don't go crazy, <laughs> but bringing it down like, you know, about a quarter of a stop ish. Yeah, I find out. I, I find that if you go beyond a half stop, it starts to, it really risks be looking a little unnatural. But even looking into the sun like that, just a little bit of a vignette helps reinforce that effect. I mean, what thoughts? Yeah, same. I like it. You, get, you can see it's real subtle. It's not much. So what about this foreground? I was wondering well, if you warm the white balance a little bit. I don't know if that would. OK, so would... how would you go about doing the white balance? Well, I'll move it a little bit toward a little bit warmer, less blue, I guess. Um, so you're look, probably looking up here in the sky where there's a lot well, of blue. Well, also the the sand and ground a bit. Uh, there's a blue. I guess there's a bluish tinge to the whole thing, which may be the intent. But I was just curious what would happen if that was warmed a bit. Yeah, so I'm I'm working off a of JPEG, so the the range is a little bit different than you with working with the raw. Is is that too much yellow, or what were you thinking? Um, yeah, it's probably a little too much. What profile is it under? It, it's a JPEG, so okay. It, it's <laughs> it's color a micro. That's really what it was down to. John, when when we drop our our photo in there, it handles a large raw file just fine. Uh, it will basically when you go to upload, it's probably I think it's going to ask you for a JPEG. Okay. 
because I've been sending JPEGs since I thought it would be a problem. But... Yeah, now I, yeah, I know that I actually have it, have it linked up with, you know, because I have the password that I could do this. I actually link our photo club of uh, submission galleries with Lightroom. So I just drive my images in it and hit publish. And that's how I use it to my own personal site as well. But when it goes up to, um, when it goes up to SmugMug, which is our host on the back end, it's converted to a JPEG. Okay. John, so, what, um, go ahead. I, I was looking at the image. Um, I mean, again, a, a tad bit of clarity is sharpening. Um, you may pull it back some, yeah. So this is this is where um, <clears throat> you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the clarity here, but look at the clouds. And this is how it's submitted. As you pull that clarity up, it really starts to work wonders on those clouds. Now, it could be that the artist would want that nice dramatic look. It could also be that we want to bring up the clarity and the sharpening in the foreground in the sand and the foam in the sand, leave the clouds alone. So that might, might be a case where we go and say, give me the sky. sky select sky and then invert. Yeah. And that way you can play with them separately. Yeah, so Lightroom generally does a good job of selecting skies, and then we can invert. As crazy as we want. <laughs> so I, I was thinking about this one, maybe a bit more of a panorama, like a, <clears throat> a two to one. Yeah, that top bright part keeps pulling my eye up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, know, we, you could play with this one. And this is one where it's like maybe three to one. The, the, you know, what I was looking at, what I'm reacting to is this large expanse of mm -hmm. nothing in it. <laughs> Yeah, it, so it could be that the photographer really just wants to place the viewer standing on a beach. Well done. Uh, yeah. If you're trying to make it creative, then where do you want the viewer to really pay attention? What do you want them to look at? And those corpuscular rays, God rays, uh, in the background, an obvious subject. I like that sky. I like that cropping of the sky because you still get that breakthrough light in some of them, but it's not as just it's not distracting like that one right up at the top. And it's still you still kind of focus on that one with the rays coming down. Yep. Yep. And this is another one. Uh, yeah, this. Again, I mean, you could do all sorts of fun in the post processing. Just the, you know, some of the things that you could try doing would be uh, radial gradient, but off the sun. A little bit vertical, not circular. And what we can do is go to the brighter spots again with luminance. We're going to go to the really brights. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And now what we can do is we can a little bit of warmth. Mm -hmm. Just a touch. Because again, you don't want to go too crazy here. Just a little bit. Gosh, that almost makes a cross in the sand. <laughs> yeah, it's just, again, just I'm, I'm offering ideas, not necessarily that this is what should be done to make it make it any better. I think, again, just standing on a beach, frankly, make my wife happy. That, that's her happy spot is anything in the beach. Uh, Me too. So again, interesting image. Uh, 
at the first thought. The highlights are kind of blown out, yeah. um, which detracts a bit. I love the color tones, but it's yeah, really bright sun. This would have been really pretty to an hour earlier. Mm. An hour earlier? An hour later. Or, or later. I don't know if it's yeah. sunrise or sunset. Right? <laughs> That's why I was asking. It's like, hmm, are you saying you want the, the sun closer to the horizon or higher in the horizon? Yeah, That's really what it boils down to. Yeah. It's whether we're looking at morning or evening. Well, or later yeah. in the year when there are leaves that would then, you know, filter the intensity of the sun in the photograph. Yeah. So, I mean, Tim may have been reacting to what appears to be dew on the grass, uh, which would yeah, imply that, that, morning. That's exactly what I was thinking. It just looked like a morning shot to me. I think I would crop in, go in a little. Yeah. Take From out where? So that you're closer to that curve, you cutting out some of the foreground and some of the fencing. Yeah. Oh, they win. Yeah, um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, because then that the light, no light spot, but the, you know that goes right to the corner of the of the image. Mm -hmm. It's a nice lead in to uh, the rest. This is one. Yeah, you know, getting to Tim's point about it being an, an obvious, almost golden hour. You could add just a touch, of, you know, of the warm tones. Mm -hmm. And there are different presets. I don't know if anybody really plays with these presets. One, there's an autumn preset. Built in? I believe it is. I believe it is. Okay. But you could play with these different presets. Mm. Yeah, and then end up doing it the way you want to do it yourself. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing about presets, right? They are a starting point, not necessarily intended to be a finish point. Right. Um, but I, th I think what one of the what one of the presets you're playing around Ooh, with that's... is doing that I would suggest is bringing up the shadows some on the right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I might go I might go the other way with that crop as well. I might take it down below that right first from the top. Hmm. From the top, take that bright burst out and, and add, add a little bit more on the left. That fence, go the other way. Take like that and and come down. Yeah, just take that burst out. That's yeah. beautiful. Too, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. What would happen if you tried to decrease the exposure on that bright part of the road, the this the distant part of the road that's so much brighter? So that's where. Um, if you had a raw file, I think it would be a really good experiment to try. As it stands, yeah. in fact, it's not going to give us good results. You have the it's mainly, mainly because we're using JPEG here. Radial gradient. That's what I want. Yeah, that crops better. Just... That burst wasn't, there's no way you could fix that sunburst. Right. Yeah, there's just no way, there's no detail in that section of the sky. I mean, this all this bright area up here, zero detail. And right. similarly with the reflection of the on the water and the road, there's no detail there. So if we if we try to pull down the exposure, or in my case, what it does to highlights, it quickly becomes apparent that there's no detail there. So actually keeping it bright works to our advantage in this case. And in fact, you maybe maybe actually enhance it even a little bit more maybe by you know even making it a little more apparent that hey there's a big yellow sun up there maybe and you know, this is it's a challenge because we've uh -huh. got we're shooting directly into that thermonuclear furnace up there um and yeah you could do a whole lot of i think it was uh how we talked about hdr earlier you can definitely do some serious uh, HDR effects to try to minimize that some, but 
Unless you got serious ND filters, you never get in the detail there. But anyway, the point I'm driving at is you know, maybe the, the, the mood of this could be really care about the glare. Maybe that's part of the appeal. I don't mm -hmm. Throw them out there, just an idea. I've seen presets like that. Yeah, and and that you know, I would I rarely use presets. Mm -hmm. Almost never. Right. But they are it's it's like a, a recipe for your favorite cake. Mm -hmm. You know what? You you try the recipe as as they gave it to you, and then you know what? Maybe you like a touch more cinnamon, or maybe you like a little bit more chocolate flavor, or a little bit more dark chocolate flavor. Yeah, you know, so you tune the recipe the more to your taste. Definitely. I kind of like the I kind of like this um, the moodiness of this and the, a little bit of silhouetteness of the trees. Yeah, and I like the brightness going back because my eye is going right back down that road into mm -hmm. that bright area, and I like that. And the that is the a little dark. A a absolutely. And despite that wow. big bright area up there, you're caught by that leading line. Yeah. Going through the image. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not bothering me. It's yeah. actually leading me in. So, That's really nice shot. Love the country lane feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That's, funny. That's great. That got your attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a relative? <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool shot. Self portrait, huh? <laughs> yeah, I self portrait. <laughs> Who is this? This is Bridget. This yeah. is self portrait. Yeah, I love and it. When you're when you were talking about your your creative um, portrait ideas, I thought this might be yours. It definitely. Um, I'm curious, was this intentionally for a Halloween costume or was it just a for the moment on board afternoon? Um, no, <laughs> like the last few years I've gone into uh, creating like kind of creative uh, makeup looks and props and stuff. So I'll go to like the dollar store or the Halloween store and just pick up something. So over time now I have like three huge bins that I use for like different collections for my photography, um, makeover kind of things. So th these were just some of the things. So it's a wig and then, yeah, the rest, I think the bow I got at a dollar store, but I like sprayed it with fake blood from the Halloween store. And then yeah, the rest is kind of like, um, yeah, the, the dollar store with the, uh, the, um, during Halloween time, the black and white kind of thing over myself was like, I kind of ripped it and it was supposed to be decoration for Halloween stuff, but I kind of sprayed some bloody stuff on it. And yeah. Hey, Bridget. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bridget, are you familiar with, um, Lens Culture? They, they run a photography contest and right now they're running a portrait contest if you go out and look at their portraits that people are submitting and past entries, this is kind of the portrait kind of, at least from my opinion, this is the kind of stuff they go for. So um, if you take portraits and you like portraits, you might want to go out and take a look at lens culture. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Any thoughts, anybody? I like the, uh, the color work in it. Um, I, I like quite a bit the the um, the decoration that has become clothing um, without that explanation. I I was taking it as um, you know material fabric um, the and the colors um, the sort of there's a kind of black and white you know, foundation and then the uh, the reds and pinks and oranges and stuff with uh, which which sort of uh, are are reflected from the face. And then there's some blues and blue green that that echoes the hair up at the top and uh, uh, and I guess the 
you know, pretty much in the middle with the three skulls and the nose are the lightest, well, with the, without the, uh, forget the bow, because it doesn't have the same, What what is it that it doesn't, because I'm much more drawn to the three, to the middle of the picture than the bow at the top, even though that's like whiter, but uh, yeah, and then the uh, the detail and the the glasses from you know whatever source that that is almost looks like a lizard eye or something uh and that which has and it has almost a kind of uh yeah glittery uh geometric uh, but organic texture and then the the hair with the you know kind of snow in it and a little fuzzy hazy the the bow looks like it very painterly looking i think it's very cool yeah that very cool. it's it's like almost a painting how did you get that effect um so i just used apps on my phone um so i have an app called pixar and an app called uh photo let me look it up um but yeah i just use it's called photo lab and so it can make um certain like styles of uh art so it can make something look like rainbow art or painting or in different types of styles so um i don't really like i said have like a nice camera or anything so i like you know paid the subscription of whatever you know six dollars a month or whatever it is but um yeah so i just use a lot of those kind of app um sources yeah. I could so, definitely see that winning an award. So you mm -hmm. took that on the cell phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, on an uh, iPhone. Uh, yeah. Did you yeah. use a tripod or a selfie stick? or? Um, no, I just hold it. I just hold it. <laughs> Surprisingly, I could see through those um, sunglass <laughs> things. <laughs> those look kind of like steampunk. Yeah, yeah, they were like yes, they do. style. The the funny part was was like I tried to do like a, I always try to do like a whole collection of photos, and so the glasses actually could not stay on properly at, with the wig, <laughs> so it was like a whole bobby pin situation. <laughs> but yeah, eventually, um, I did a couple of other things yep. with like, um, I guess Thanks, like John. rubber gloves that had like blood on it, like smoking a cigarette and. Uh, <laughs> I tried to make kind of like a collection of kind of like spooky scientist killer or something like that. I don't know. You have definitely found a style of your own that is really great. I really like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the only significant edit, you, you saw me just clone out that lamp yeah. that was in the background. Yeah, um, yeah before I was going to say that, same thing it's like hey, you know, the only thing i can see that would improve it and it's just taking that out uh minor but uh and i'm i'm just playing with this i'm not sure this would work uh -huh. it, but i'm gonna try just a very light vignette just a touch basically i'm going to invert this and try pulling this down bit because again you, you go too far oh, wow. it's crazy right but just a touch oh cool mm -hmm. and you know so th this is zoomed out obviously like thumbnail size and then come back to normal fit so you can see just a subtle mm -hmm. vignette helps oh. reinforce the, the face a little bit yeah i think yeah. that vignette and, and removing the lamp you got a nice it's it's Quirky, I think. Really, I mean, it's I like, I like it. it. It's creative. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's um, a, a very interesting uh, sort of tension between a quirky, arty, and oh my god, uh, <laughs> somebody wake me up before this thing guts me. You know? well, <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued by when you said that you had done you know some of this with like uh, you know bloody outfit, you know, with bloody evening gloves and smoking a cigarette. It's like right out of a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the they were like, um, 
they were like rubber gloves, like cleaning gloves oh. um, covered in blood. So yeah, but I did have this cigarette and uh, I had some with the glasses kind of on top of the hair. Um, so you could kind of see like trying to see like nothing in my eyes. Um, so I, I'm trying to do kind of a collection when I do like the photo shoots and do like a total of five per thing. So like, I don't know. And so I try to give like a lot of variety and try to use different props and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, Welcome really to my nightmare. Welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I think Glenn so J. Adams would have approved. Uh, Tim Turner doing a sheet as a backdrop. That's right a great color. idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Because you want to yeah, do this repetitively, and that way they'll be uniform. Yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I did um at one point one photo shoot I did like tin foil. I taped tin foil to like the whole side of my wall so that could be the background, but uh I like the white sheet better. That sounds a lot more clean and everything. Well, if you enter it and it wins, let us know. <laughs> okay, thanks. So here's obviously a stylized post-processing technique. Yeah, this is also uh, mine. Um, so I was kind of nervous since I'd never been to the group and I was like afraid if I did two ones of self-portraits, it would be a little too scary um, for everyone. So <laughs> this was a photo I just took of my sister and her husband and um, the background was really dry because it was like middle of winter last year. And so it was a lot of browns, um, like the, gr the grass was not green or anything. Um, so I just kind of played with some settings and I thought this kind of was a fun, like RT take on a romantic photo. With the classic, uh, foot in the air, yeah. from the, the <laughs> bent leg of ecstasy there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's borderline cliche with the, with the leg in the air. So I don't know if I really like it. Well, what you call it then is ironic, right? Okay. <laughs> I like, the color, I like the colors. Uh, yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, the mixture of colors is really good. Thank you. I like that. Yeah, I the like white, the uh, <laughs> you got sort of a nighttime feel to it from the top and the bottom and then the white across. I mean, it's somehow having white trees at night works in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Looks infrared almost. All right, any other comments? I Welcome like to the club, chat. Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah, I do like the great uh, creativity, <laughs> though. I like the leg in the air. Maybe I I'm did, yeah. dating you know myself. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I like Thank it. The date. Cliche like or not, I don't picture. care. It looks yeah. Good. Okay. Thank it's, you. It's a fun pose and a fun picture. Uh huh. Meow. Oh, I yeah. feel like this cat is watching me. This is this it really is, is very effective. Um, the, I mean, the the Beautiful. yeah, that one eye is really looks... kind of nail you. Uh -huh. yeah. It looks like a mouse took the picture. <laughs> right. I'm the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, Patty. That's so good. This this cat was interesting let's just say the least <laughs> you usually do dogs don't you well i i shoot at the shelter so i i oh. shoot whatever they have <laughs> okay so this is the thing about nice big eyes zoom in and see oh. okay what was their lighting set <laughs> you can oh, yeah. see what soft boxes they used or yeah how many lights they were using to light the subject yeah. So Patty, did you set up like a studio backdrop and everything there? Yeah. And uh, for cats, we usually set them up on a table because it's better that way. <laughs> I was going to say, I can't believe you even got it to sit still. <laughs> oh, I can tell you stories about that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I have three cats and they don't pose. <laughs> yes. John what, if, John, what if you went in and highlighted that background and changed that color of the background from a blue to see see what that would do to the image. I think the blue is a, a nice, uh, it's sort of the opposite of the yellowish eyes and a, you know, slightly yellowish 
cast to the cat, you know? Maybe a bluish, maybe a grayish blue? Is that what you're so, thinking? Let's take it down to different colors and see if there's anything that works. Ooh. And you gotta see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is just changing the, the hue yeah. mm -hmm. light to the background. Oh, I like that grayish blue. Like a lighter blue. That's pretty. Like purple like that. Yeah. The other blue is a little too bright. So bring it right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So just take it down a little bit. Still have mm -hmm. the complementary colors. Mm -hmm. What if you darken the exposure a little bit? Or lightened it. Try the other way and see what happens. So it puts more attention on the cat. Yeah. About a quarter stop brighter. Yeah. Or you could just darken the background and leave the cat. Yeah, that's yeah, what I that's what I was wondering. I sent, there you I go. sent a note. I like about, that. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's different mm -hmm. that was sort of like Ready. the the night cat, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with, with the darker but it's like a different cat from the one we first saw mm -hmm. when the picture appeared. You know, yeah, different I mean, mood to it, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't have any blue cats, you have total control of the background. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I was also thinking of, of a vignette, you know, that might help too. I was wondering about that. Let's give that a shot. So I'm going to go back out thumbnail view. The cat's beautiful and you got did such a great job capturing it. it's all the whole thing in focus and you could just see the whiskers, everything. Thanks. For this a little bit of a vignette. Yeah. 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 It's more depth. Real subtle. So pretty. And it kind of, um, you know, the roundness of his head, um, especially across the top, the vignette sort of uh, emphasizes or matches or something. Yep. Brings a viewer in. That cat's ready to swat. Yeah. yeah wait till you see the next picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Shot. Yeah, I, 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 I did sharp, did a little bit of topaz sharpen on the claws because I thought that fascinated me and it just kind of <laughs> captured what, you know, what I, the character of cats, you know, they're always yeah. like. <laughs> Anybody who's had one knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that bothered me was his legs sticking off to the edge of the frame and it's so bright looking and I wasn't sure what to do about that. Well, let's see. Did the vignette do that? I'm gonna start with a brush. You could darken it a little. I, I, that's pretty minor. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, bring down the highlights just a little bit. That helps minimize it. So this was the original. Pull yeah. it down. Um, you know, you go crazy with it. But again, subtlety is often the key to these. Um, you know, a vignette might help. Maybe I play with. I think uh, Jack, you were talking about that. I um, think because the focus is just on the ball and the claw that leg doesn't doesn't grab your attention as much not at all that's what i'm yeah. thinking i mean it, it's 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 soft it's in the background you think yeah. it yeah. will be a gimmick but if you uh put some uh clarity in those eyes to make them look intimidating but that would be gimmicky but it'd be cute like the the demon cat right <laughs> <laughs> nobody will adopt it because you got you got two elements of sharpness that would be your third <laughs> Oh gosh. I don't know how you're gonna do it though. 
watch me. Not that I've played with this kind of editing at all. No, 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 no. This is my first time ever doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that goes great color-wise, too. I mean, it yeah, adds. There you go. I would retouch that string coming off the ball. Oh, the yeah. I, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, this. Click. Fifth click. He was sure fun. It, that was fun. That was a fun day. I had a lot of fun animals that day. <laughs> oh, those aren't strings, those are out. cat hairs. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, that that at the bottom, that was part of the ornament and I, I overlooked that. I was curious, how, how did you select the aperture to just get the depth of field? Because that really is amazing how it highlights, you know, the, the one in the bowl, but. Was well, believe, believe it or not, I was at a, like a 7.1 or F8, but when mm -hmm. you're close with um, mm -hmm. with the lens. Then your field is shorter, Yeah, the, right? your, your depth of field gets a little bit shorter when you're working kind of close. So this one, this one says it was at 5.6, but yeah, oh, if, okay. if you're only a couple feet away. I was yeah. I was changing my aperture a couple of times so that so that must yeah the five point six so but yeah I was also working kind of close because um, I had it on seventy millimeters and I was working kind of close. Yep. I didn't want to get too close because I didn't want to get swatted. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I like this one. Uh, yo, I, I, you, Patty, I think you're. Your choice on this one to focus in on that claw about the swipe, I thought was a good creative choice. Yes, mm -hmm. it's obviously a cat in the background, but you know the eye is drawn to that claw, which is frankly where the interest is in this particular mm -hmm. company. I like it. That's good. Yeah, and I think next week I'm going back to the shelter. They got more animals for me to take pictures, so. Do they put these on their website? Yeah, well, it depends. I don't think they, I don't think they would have put that one on there. But uh -huh. um, the other ones I took, they put them up on Pet Finder. Oh, it's the Manassas City Shelter. So if you go on Pet Finder and you look up Manassas City Shelter, they'll have my pictures up. If you now, sometimes they'll put the intake pictures up, but if you see the ones that have my name on the bottom, those are mine. Okay. All right. So we are on, we got about another uh, 10 ish images to go. Uh, it is nine o'clock. Yeah. So <laughs> we can do, we can keep going. I'm, I'm okay for another few minutes. I, you know, I don't want to keep everybody up, you know, spending you know, 10 minutes on each of these images. So I, I guess my first question is, is there anybody who would, really want to critique on their images that has not yet heard from crew. Uh, I, I was hoping to get some feedback on the member you, you were saying yeah, so Jack, this one's a montage and, and right. it, but I didn't so, see your email until you right. Know, so so Jack's looking for feedback. I really wanted to okay. uh, get some it's like the this play going on. Yeah, and we can get there. Image, we can get there. Just not, you know, but I don't know if that's even available. Right. So, uh, with Jack's, uh, Doug, uh, were you yes. saying you wanted, okay. So, Doug and, Matt and Jack, anybody else really jonesing for feedback? I wouldn't mind you looking at it my, my Okay. Life. I don't do a lot of these. So, let's Tom, take this is Audrey. Maybe we should do a part two also of this. So, yeah, we, anybody we could. who didn't get a critique just to make sure that everybody gets a chance who submitted images the 16th yeah all right so um john is Jackie, that okay i mean we can talk about it afterward but I yeah just we could we could pick another we could pick another day i mean because i i want to you know people have got some creative images that were submitted and, and you know i i really 
that this is one of those things where I, I struggle in some of these peer review sessions because I'm trying to balance allowing everybody to, to weigh in. And, and, you know, because a lot of creative ideas come from this give and take that we ha that you've seen here tonight, for example. I, I'm almost hesitant to cut it off too soon. But as you can see, almost two hours into this thing and we're a little more than halfway, halfway through. through. Things, so, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. I, you know, on the one hand, I want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to at least get a little bit of feedback. But at the same time, I don't want to cut off that feedback prematurely. So I like it, I like Audrey's suggestion about having a part two, because this is this is a this is really interesting. And I and I am enjoying it a lot. All right, I'm well, learning we, a lot. We can definitely <laughs> so, set up another one for later. Yeah, I like know. that. I like I that agree. part two business. Yeah. Because yeah. then you, you see how other people see things right exactly a, a, that you yeah. never thought of or you know yeah it's, it's yeah this so is tell, extremely uh, helpful extremely tell, helpful. i think I this it. was the, I, it's just, tim i suspect this is yours <gasps> i think i recall this from a previous competition uh not a competition but i, I think i posted it on facebook or something ah similar okay. like yeah yeah uh I, you know since it came up i didn't want to short change it here too much um and was there anything in particular that you were curious about? Um, I was just curious overall. I, I wasn't perfectly happy with it. Uh, the, the, and maybe it's just me, but the grain of the wood is not square with the frame. And I that kind of annoyed me, but I didn't see until afterward. The thing that I first... Uh thought was because uh, a bunch of my pictures I uh, auto uh, white balance because it seems like it's sort of a bit tungstenized but uh, you know what would it look like with a different white balance well I was kind of going for a uh, a warm look but sure sure yeah yeah I get that could I make a suggestion? So I've shot a lot of pictures using fairy lights and Christmas lights. I think you're a little too close, actually. If you want to get good bokeh, you know, good pop with Christmas lights or fairy lights, you need to set your whatever you're photographing about two to four feet away from the lights to get really nice out of focus bokeh on these. So um, one thing that you could try if you want to reshoot this again is take the table or whatever you're doing and try to move either move the Christmas lights back or move your table away and then reshoot it. Um, okay, I that's a good idea for and I liked November. the uh, table before you got it all straightened out. Actually, I thought it. I don't know. More, um, yeah, sort of. What's the difference? I just, yeah, I like it better. But Tim, if you're you're curious, what did you see how idea I did the, about the? I'm sorry. The straightening. Yeah, it looked what like was, you did what? you the guide it, and then you just did two lines. I didn't realize it would do that. Yep, I've always done it with three. Well, you and, can actually do as many as four. Um, and that's really where, you know, for example, you, you know, in an architectural setting, you, you know, do the, the top and then you can say, all right, I want, here's my bottom that I want to be parallel with the bottom of the frame. And, you know, got too much of a lean in effect. So on the right side of this building, I want you to straighten that up. And oh, by the way, I'll straighten up that side. So you can draw as many as four lines in a guided upright. Okay. Now, obviously. Sure. That's not and the watch could be square. <laughs> <laughs> but you know um yeah because you you probably yes tim just simply rotating this is just yeah yeah i tried that and that didn't work very well um i, th I like audrey's idea of putting a little more space between the tree and the table it would help with a little bit more of that bokeh Plus and... you lose the reflection on the table because you can see some of the blue on the table which yeah, I don't think was quite intended. Yeah, and and Tim, you were saying you were trying to go for a warm look, and that's where you know those, unfortunately, those blue lights are really working against you here. Yes, they're not real warm. 
You might, try a, you, get, you might try a vignette to just to around the edges to make them a little darker. Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, it's, um, and I might need to go down to the fridge and raid the fridge. And that light right above the uh, rim of the cup could probably go to that white light. You could just, in the tree, yep, right there, get rid of that altogether. That's just a distraction that could go away. There you go. Yeah, good, good eye. I was thinking like you, John, that's making me really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look good. All right. Oh, let's see here. Let's hear. So, Jack, you wanted to go to this one, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, each, everything that was going on there was just amazing. And um, how to convey that with multiple images without them getting in, in each other's way or being just too much visually all at once or I don't know. And so that's what I kind of went with um, as a as a shot at it and interested to, you know, what what everybody else sees. Thoughts from the crew? Where was this taken, actually? Uh, Hudson Bay, Churchill, oh. Manitoba. Wow. There's, I think they're great. Yeah, wonderful pictures. Yeah. The lights and the snow yeah. and the bears. Yeah, watching them play was just mm. magnificent, amazing. So I'm thinking, um, I think six on on the same image is probably overkill. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking like maybe a triptych would work well. And of these six, I like the body. I three. would. Well, th those certainly would work. I mean, there's hardly. I mean, pick three, and it's almost hard to go wrong. Um, yeah. I kind of like. I think this is you know, either Big Brother or, or Mama Bear and the Cub. Yeah, um, Mom and I Cub. Like that yes. one. I uh -huh. like that one. And then I kind of like this one where the cub is obviously leaning out or, you know, and, and just playing around. And frankly, this one here. Um, so, but uh, the, again, the idea with the triptych is you've got the same theme in, in the three images. Um, you know, it's like maybe a sequence in time or, you know, just variations on it, on the activity of the pose. I'm, I'm thinking three would probably be the max that I would do. Two might not be a good balance on the image, but what a about triptych. Four? I, I, well, again, I mean, it's not. I'd uh, go yeah, with it's three. All, it's all creative, three. right? So it's whatever the artist thinks is going to uh, achieve the goal. Um, the, odd the, numbers the, tend to work the, better for a human feel. The one on the bottom right is really cute, but I don't know that it fits with the rest because of the grass type. Yeah, thing. they moved that, and that picture is taken off to the right. Uh, in the background of that picture is Hudson Bay, now frozen, um, and they were playing right on the edge. Uh, They're like just about on the beach in the bottom, bottom uh, right hand side. I did four. Just um, and, yeah. and the the proportions of the um, of the pictures, uh, you know, each one I liked, but then the four of them together wasn't working for the aggregate proportion, which is why I kind of went with, well, try six then. It's closer to the you know, one to 1. 1.6 or 1. 1.5 of, of a print, you know, because I am going to print something like this as a gift for somebody. And 
Mm -hmm. so, I, and I liked your uh, your cropping there, your or your framing of the the two of uh, mom, and I think that's a female cub that, and the two of them are just, you know. And what one of the things that really struck me was, um, you know, they're mammals and we're mammals, and how they were play. You know, we we a lot of times. You know, we'll say, oh, well, we're anthropomorphizing, you know, we're projecting ourselves onto the world. And yet here, it really was not that. It was, you know, what what we have in common with these animals, which is a, a whole bunch of, you know, feelings and play and relationship. That's all, you know, old brain and mid brain and, uh, uh, it, it was very emotional, um, amazing experience. Mm -hmm. I I would do three, and I think you're right about that last one because it doesn't kind of fit. But the three that I would do would be um, the first one would be number four, which is the bottom left, uh -huh. and then the second one I would do is the third one, which is the top right. Uh huh. Oh, no, no, that would be the last one. I'm sorry. Okay. That uh -huh. would be the last one with the one uh, in the middle and the bottom being in between. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, the, uh, I think it's the male cub and he's got going for the kill on mom, you know? <laughs> yeah, you but I, I was like, you know, the, the that bottom left, which is number four, I would do number four, number five, and then that number, number three. three okay that's what i would do yeah thank you yeah yeah i sent out number three as a christmas card to a bunch of people you know that's uh and if you look closely you can see um the other cubs uh yeah see there's his nose and his eyes and stuff uh they were just it was like terminally cute the cutest thing i've ever seen but well, do not get close or you <laughs> may not you know be coming back to tell the story that last one i would do all by itself that's gorgeous yeah i mean that that's a a, a, a very beautiful standalone yeah. yeah i agree on that last one yeah. the last one's really mm -hmm. got some mood yeah that's wall decor there for sure and that, that's what you know what we that where they closed their eyes when they were together there i mean they had their eyes open a moment before that and it was like communing together in love that's a mother and her daughter you know and and we get that because we have that too yeah very right. nice shots <clears throat> yeah like which one which one did I you have, to, like, 21 and 22. Uh, if we had to do one which one would it be uh try 21 it's kind of different okay kind of a minimalist beach feel i like it i would um bring the exposure down so that it's not you know, so that it's more of a grayish fog than a white fog. And without giving it clarity, if you can do that. I mean, it's that whole mysterious, you know, what are these shapes and that, that whole that we don't want to lose, but I don't know. It's. Um... I have a question for Doug. Go ahead, Daryl. I, I, I guess when I first saw it, I I I kind of liked the high key aspect of it. So I mean, if that was the original intent. Yeah, it was a thick I, fog. It was thick. It take down that sky a little bit. Bring it. Drop it down. Drop it down. Drop it down. So I was thinking about that. I was I was thinking, let's try the two to one crop first. See how yep. right you think. Bring it down. Even more. Mm 
Yep. And maybe um, like lose the contract. The the debris is, I guess it's, it's kelp and stuff on the on the right border there. Yeah, if that could be more vague, you know. Um, yeah, or you could send it to Daryl. He'll fix it right up for you. <laughs> <laughs> for the right um, price. But it has a price. One, well, I mean, it could yeah you know, try. I just I don't want to desaturate it, but um, basically you try adding a little bit of haze, maybe just a little bit. Wow! Oh yeah. Um, doing away with the contrast. You know, uh, I don't pull know. The clarity, clarity way down. Texture. Yeah, that's better. That's more foggy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What was that? So what did you do there? You you. Uh... Pull down clarity. 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 Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah, a yeah. touch of negative dehaze and then a lot of negative clarity. How about a less texture? Try that too. But that's not going to be as much of an impact yeah, with this yeah. image. Yeah. I mean, texture, texture, of, you know, that, that addresses the finer detail. So, yes. you, you know, it'll soften up the fine detail or enhance the finer detail. Mm -hmm. um, Frankly, I'm loving this minimalist feel. Uh, you know, the, all right, the seaweed on the right, maybe it's distracting, but frankly, that doesn't bother me. That mm -hmm. doesn't bother me nearly as much as that bright blue in the water. You could crop a little left. Well, actually, kind of like, I, I like, if um, my, fear, my fear is if we crop left, you know, crop in from the left anymore, yeah, that it will the balance, the balance of the image, the right? Because I I like having enough of that water coming in that you know you've got this curving beach. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play with this just a little bit. See, you know, I crop even more brush. of the top, John, because the interest is those people back there, yeah, we'll, and I crop play even more from the top. Uh, now what I, I'm going to do I is I like the foreground because it's bringing you into you know onto the beach. There's not a lot of, I mean, in terms of the, you know, whatever, third, I mean, the, the sky isn't real big. I don't know. You maybe could crop the top a little. I crop the top. This, you, you can still come down. Because the interest is those people. Yeah. It, so I'm, I'm desaturating that blue just a little bit. So it doesn't grab my attention much. If you could go into color grading and. and yeah. Work. Definitely so you want do that, that to too. be more subtle, the blue, because I was trying to juxtapose it with the blue shirt, you know. So yeah, well, it agree, agree. And that's what I, I I thought that might be what you're going for. And that's why I, I like a little bit of that blue. Um, as as much as there was, I mean, if we go back to wh where it was, was here. So you can see that yeah. I only desaturated it a little bit. But and where it was, one, it's yeah. once seen, it's, you can't unsee it. Because you're, you're right, that bright blue of the, of the shirt on the beach, that's, that's perfect, right? You got that, just enough of detail there, you know, it you know, grabs the attention. You can see the, the ethereal human shapes in the background. You know, I love that misty, minimalist look to it. Um, now we we could try, you know. I think who was that talking about the guy going in a little bit? Sorry, Susan Telegrading. Okay, Susan. So let's try a three to one crop. See how that strikes us. I like that. You still get that minimalist feel in, in, without as much of the the dead space. So three to one crop, y'all like? Yeah, uh, I kind I like of like a little more foreground like to kind of bring you on to yeah, the beach. Yeah, but okay, the more foreground. Yep. I, I'm like I said, I I really like the the composition here. Uh, uh, who was that talking about the high key look? I, I sure. agree. Uh, uh, yeah, Daryl, I, I agree with you. I like the high key look. And, you know, contrasted with that dark blue. A little bit of the blue in the water. 
which I suspect was <clears throat> enhanced to be blue. <laughs> doesn't blue matter. Edge, yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. I it it's it's a nice touch. Any any other comments? Anybody? Just for grands, what if you cropped him out? I mean, if you brought it in, just if you went to your crop tool and just took him out altogether and just came to the left, what would that look like? Not as interesting to me. Uh, well, then I would want some bring the sky back, and uh, I mean it, it could be uh, entry a completely different picture, but still. Uh, I, think I just brought it. I, I just I like the them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's as interesting. Yeah. Right. I, I thought what's interesting is the contrast between the sharper figure in the front and the ghost like figure. Yeah, that's perfect. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was good. All right, folks, we're coming up at 930. I really don't want to take this and keep you guys up all night. I mean, but it, you know, really great participation from everybody in the crew tonight. Definitely appreciate a the images brave enough to submit the images for critique like this from more than just one person um, and the engagement. All of you folks were offering your ideas, really creative ideas for you know how to you know adjust your compositions and you know post processing techniques. So definitely appreciate you providing your your feedback on all these images. And again, I think this type of engagement really helps us all improve. So thank you for your for your assistance. Yeah. Well, thanks for hosting and yeah. you know uh, enabling the the suggestions and comp to be able to see that. Uh, appear, you know, the concept of something ain't the something. And so to see it actually show up makes a big difference. And, uh, you know, the last thing, and that is everybody who's here is here because they're motivated to be here. And uh, I think that's, that's great. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't see it as, uh, gee, it's after nine o'clock, there's a problem. I know, I know, but you know, it is a school night. So I want to be sensitive to everyone getting some, some yeah. beauty sleep. So here's what I'll do. Uh, I'll, I'll, I take to heart the, the idea that, you know, let's set up another one of these because you know, it seems like folks are really enjoying this. So the images that were not reviewed tonight, I'll keep them safe. Um, and we'll, we'll schedule another one for another month or two down the road, uh, but we'll definitely do another one of these before the season ends. How about that? Sounds good. Great. Good. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the stop on the record now and find the button.